Hey everybody, and welcome to this video. I am so excited because this is my very first product review video. Now, I wanna go ahead and ask you guys, if you like these videos, please leave a comment down below. I would love to know your thoughts. And of course, please drop a like and subscribe. Today, we are talking about cell phone stabilizers. <music> Now, this cell phone stabilizer is really, really interesting because there are no other videos on YouTube about it. I'm happy to actually be the very first person to make a video about this stabilizer. Part of that is because the company is really new, because the company is working on their Amazon. They only sell on Alibaba. So if you want this product, you need to go to Alibaba to get it for the time being. Now, this stabilizer is the Aotron Smart S1. Currently, it's the only product that Aotron makes, but they are on their way and developing new products that are gonna, gonna be coming soon. Now, before I get started, this is not a paid advertisement. I actually bought this myself, so they're not asking me to say good things or bad things or whatever. I just wanna get that out of the way before we get into it. So, let's get into it. The first thing you automatically notice when you open up the box is, of course, the case. This is a styrofoam case, and the bevels on the inside have little wedges that kind of lock it into place. Having a case for a stabilizer like this is really great. The one thing that I would say is there's no lock. There's no actual lock. So if I just turn this over without holding onto it, this case is gonna open up. The other thing I noticed is there's no handle, and that would be really nice to be able to have a handle to hold onto. That being said, the case is nice and it fits the stabilizer really well. Also, the handle and the lock are nice, but to be honest, if I'm taking the stabilizer out, I'm not going to be carrying the case with it. I'm just gonna have the stabilizer in hand with the cell phone inside of it. I will say I like the design of the case. I, there's some other, for me, I kind of like the simpler design. I feel like that's better. And this, despite it just being styrofoam, has a high-tech look about it, and I really appreciate that. Okay, so then you open it up. And when you open up the box, it comes with three things. So here in my hands is everything that's in the box. You have the little booklet on how to use it. You have the manual, which of course is very important. Then you have the actual gimbal itself. You have the tripod in order to set the gimbal up or stabilize your phone on there. And then you have a USB-C to normal USB cord. Now, as somebody who uses stabilizers, having a good tripod is really important. I've used some Moses stabilizers. I've used some Feiyu stabilizers. I don't have enough money, honestly, to get a DJI or a Zhiyun. Uh, but I will say this tripod is something that I really like, mainly because these hinges are nice and sturdy. And of course, you just screw the tripod. Your stabilizer is ready to go. Now, this stabilizer supports both landscape and portrait shooting modes. You, just, you can just take the cell phone clamp here and rotate it like this to do portrait, and then of course rotate it back to do landscape shooting. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and put my phone into the stabilizer, and of course you can see that it's stable because I can kind of put this in any way and it stays there. The stabilizer connects to your phone through Bluetooth. And I do have to say, that's the thing that I like most about this stabilizer is the Bluetooth connection. So just like all stabilizers, you just hold the power button down to turn it on. The stabilizer, if your cell phone is in portrait mode, you can actually plug your cell phone into the stabilizer here using whatever your cell phone's USB input. And this, I believe, is a USB mini. It's a mini USB. Right here on the side is a USB-C charging port, or if you need to plug this into your computer, although I don't think you need to do that. Of course, on the other side here, you have, <clears throat> you have a standard thread for screwing in like an external monitor something like that. And then of course on the back you have, you have the trigger which dictates the mode that the stabilizer runs in. And then you have the face. So let's go ahead and just run through the buttons here. Of course you have the power button, you have the record button here which is for video and that'll automatically start video recording. 
And then you have this scroll wheel, which is a zoom. It'll zoom in, zoom out. Then you have this scroll wheel here that scrolls around. And in the center of that is your shutter button for taking photos. On the top, bottom, right and left of the scroll wheel, you have different options. The top is if you wanna set a delay for the camera to, so that it'll delay shooting up to th from between three and five seconds. The left here takes you to your gallery of the photos and videos that you've taken. The right dictates your shooting mode. This bottom button is the tracking option. And there's two basic tracking options. You can either do face tracking. When that's activated, the gimbal will actually track your face as you move around. So if you get closer, of course, it'll pan up. If you get further away, it might pan down, but it'll do its best to keep your face in the center of the shot. And then there's the object tracking where you can select an area on the screen within which an object is contained. And then as that moves, the gimbal will track that through the shot. The object tracking can very easily get distracted with background elements and then end up tracking something else. But I do have to say, in my use of the face tracking, it has done a really good job. I actually got in a shot with my wife and I and it stayed on my face even as we crossed by each other. So the face tracking was really well done. Then this bottom button is something I really find interesting. Hitting that actually turns on your phone's flashlight. And then this top button over here, this display button, it brings up all of your camera parameters. So your EV, plus or minus, your focusing, and, and then your white balance and your zoom. So then there's the AC Play app. And the app I have found to be very usable, unlike some other stabilizer apps out there. It's got a ton of different modes. And of course, the app can only use your, your camera's inbuilt capabilities. So this cell phone, it can shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second, and it can shoot 720p at 120 frames per second, which means that the AC Play app will let me shoot at 1080p or 720p at 30 frames per second, and it'll let me shoot slow motion at 720p um, at 120 frames per second. Uh, for the video modes on this, you can do either a default, which of course is just you using the gimbal, and then you can do a motion shot where you can set up an animated motion and maybe turn the camera, you can do a panning shot where you turn the camera and set it up in one direction and then you turn it over and you set it up in another direction. And then you can specify the length and duration that the gimbal will take in order to move. And of course you can do that same thing in the time-lapse mode, which of course means that you have time lapses and then there's two other photo modes out there. One would be the long exposure. You have two types of long exposure modes. Modes You have a, an overlap where it continually takes photos while you're shooting and then overlays them one on the other in order to make a long exposure photograph. And then you have the light mode where the same thing happens except for those overlaid photos are put in a light mode so that only the lights show through. And then finally, you have several different panorama option. A 180 or 330 degree panorama, which of course just moves the camera around and then they and then the program automatically stitches everything together. Finally, you have three different modes for using the gimbal. Those modes are all switched through by using this trigger back here. You have the pan follow mode, which means that the gimbal will the gimbal will follow you while you pan right and left, but not up and down. If I hit this again, then there's the all follow mode, which of course follows me regardless of whether I tilt the camera up or down, right and left. There's the all lock mode, move, which just keeps the camera stable regardless of how I move the gimbal. And then there's, they call this mad dog mode if you hold the little trigger down. And that's where you can turn this any which way you want and it just does its best to stabilize it. Last but not least, we come to my opinion on this. I, I really like personally having a long handle to a gimbal because I like to use both of my hands. And so I really appreciate that this tripod is long and that it screws in and fits well with the handle of the gimbal. As, as long as I've used this, it doesn't seem like the app has any issues with disconnecting from the gimbal. And so I really like that as well. The app on the whole is fairly easy to use. It takes a little bit of getting used to and some different swiping right and left to figure out where some options are, but generally it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, the only complaint I have about the app is that you can't change this scroll wheels function. 
Right now the scroll wheel, right now the scroll wheel controls the zoom and I would prefer it to control the focus of my camera instead so I can better manually focus without having to touch the screen. But that's really a, a small thing. The gimbal is really quiet, which I appreciate. It's not gonna make a lot of noise while you're filming. I would say on the whole, I'm very pleased with this product. To be honest, I didn't know what to expect when I first started talking with the company just because they were so new, but I am definitely pleasantly surprised. I don't know about you guys, but I find myself more and more using my cell phone for video. I mean, I would have shot this video on my cell phone today, except for I had to use my cell phone to run the gimbal. I'm more and more using my cell phone for photos because it can shoot raw, so why not? It's so much easier to just stick in my pocket. And in general, cell phone tech like this is gonna be a whole lot cheaper than something for a DSLR or a more professional camera. And of course, if you're doing more professional work, you're gonna need that stuff. I mean, I have a stabilizer for my DSLR, but this is definitely something that I could see myself using, even using in professional work. I mean, the film that I uploaded with this one I shot using this camera and this stabilizer. Which, by the way, if you guys like that, go ahead and tell me in the comments of either that video or this one. I don't know if you guys trust my opinion or not, mainly because this is my first product video and we don't have that kind of relationship. But I do believe that I would recommend this to a friend, especially someone who is just getting into videography or cell phone photography. I'm really excited to get out and go do some hyperlapses with this, go do some time lapses and and see how those work out. So anyway, I hope that this video has been helpful for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.